Okay. So we've talked a lot about functions already in this class. There are these things in R that produce some kind of action. You, you give them something and they spit something back out. But let's talk a little bit more about some cool stuff we can do with functions. So yeah, we've seen a bunch of them, this combined function, the class function, all of our tidyverse functions. Um, but we can actually create our own, and it's very straightforward to do that in R. Um, and there's a couple of different reasons why we might want to do that. And so we'll just talk a little bit about them. Um, but just first things first, it makes things easier sometimes. Um, but importantly, it can cut down on repetitive code. You know, say you want to process a couple different data sets in the exact same way. If you cut and paste that a bunch of times, you know, it's possible you might need to make some changes or, um, you know, fix something down the road. You'll have to remember to do that a couple times. But if you create a function that does it, you only have to fix it in one place. Uh, so that can make things easier to maintain and easier to, uh, you know, make reproducible down the line. It can help you organize your code into manageable chunks. And so, you know, you have a function up here that does this part of pre-processing of your data and this part that does the analysis, just be a good way to organize things. Um, you can avoid running code unintentionally. So, you know, if you wanna save uh, a function that does something and, you know, you wanna keep it around, but, you know, maybe you're not sure if you wanna use it in your final analysis, um, it can be a good way to kind of toggle that on and off. And finally, um, you may have noticed that some of the functions in R, maybe like the name isn't very intuitive or, you know, there's something that you want to uh, create with a name that makes a lot of sense to you. Um, you can use names that, you know, that make sense and uh, that you'll remember um, if you want. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's write some of our own functions. So first we'll write a function that its, its mission is to multiply some number that we provide it. In this case, we'll call it X. Um, we wanna multiply some number by two. And so here, what we've got is a new name for our function. And so this is like equivalent to calling it uh, the combine or calling it class or calling it um, filter or something like that. We're giving it this new names times two, we're assigning it and we're using this function, function <laughs> and giving it an argument. We're telling it, okay, I'm gonna look for a variable X. And then to the right of that, we've got the actual meat of the function. It's taking whatever you provide for X and it's gonna multiply it by two, okay? So just writing that out in our console, we can assign that. And I could name this whatever I want if I wanted to be Y or N or it's really just a variable kind of stand in. So just like when we load a library or when we uh, reassign a, a data set, um, when we run that line of code, it's, not, it's ready to use, but there's no output yet. So the next step is actually testing this function that we've created. So if I wanna do times two, um, I give it an actual value for that argument that I gave, that I uh, established up above. And if I want to do times 10, I can do that. I should get 20 because it's multiplying by two. Uh, but it, let's say I give it a hundred, um, it'll spit out the, the answer for kind of any variable that I provide it or any number that I provide it. Okay, so sometimes you may want to have a function that does things across multiple lines or maybe is a little bit bigger. Um, you can always add these curly 
brackets around the meat of your function, the content of what it's actually doing. Um, so if I wanted to just take what I wrote up here and say, okay, the, the content of my function is this X times two, um, I'm just gonna surround that with these curly brackets. I can do that, should give me the exact same thing. Um, but yeah, if I wanna break lines, uh, normally um, R will kind of interpret things line by line, but if you give it these curly brackets, it will run or use everything inside those as part of the function, okay? Um, so yeah, this should give us the exact same output as before. So maybe we want to specify specific things from our function to uh, give us back as output. Um, you know, maybe something's on a different line because you know by default it's going to give us whatever the last thing it ran was inside the function. Um, but let's say you know I want to save some variable. Um, in this case, I'm going to save an, a variable output, and then I want to return that variable at the very end of that function running, um, that that is best practice to use this return to basically give you back what you expect. Um, so in this case, uh, we're just using this variable output as kind of a placeholder, um, but maybe you have some more complicated stuff going on up above and you just wanna return something simple, uh, you can use the return at the bottom of the function to do that. Okay, so to review, the syntax for a function uh, is there's a couple things going on. So on the left hand side, you're going to give the function a new name and generally be careful and don't like use a function that is already already has a name. So give it something explanatory, but you know, I, I would try not to overwrite any existing functions that you're going to need. Um, so don't make a new function called filter. That would uh, make things kind of uh, wonky down the road. Um, and so you're going to assign that. You're going to use this function and then give it specific inputs. You'll actually have the body, the meat of the function that will use those inputs to actually do something. And then finally, you'll return the value that you created uh, with the body of the function that you're actually interested in. Okay, so a little bit more about um, how you can kind of customize your own functions. So you can give a function more than one input. So let's say we want to create a function that multiplies something um times two but also adds another number but we're gonna like let that be an argument we're gonna let the user specify that um, or ourselves specify that later so we'll tell it okay function we're gonna give it an argument x and we're gonna give it an argument y and so then the meat of our function here is x times two just like before but now we're also adding this second variable y. And so if we uh, run this function, so I'm gonna just copy this, pop it in my console, you won't get any output just like before, uh, but we're saving it, we're ready to use it and we can just test it out. So using that function times two plus y that we created, and giving it an argument for X. And we're telling it, okay, X equals 10. We're plugging that in up here. And Y, that number that's added at the end is three. Okay. Um, so if you do some quick algebra, you can see that that uh, works as expected. Okay. 
okay. So, you know, sometimes you may, when you're using a function, you usually use the same number, but, you know, sometimes you could use a different number. Um, you know, let's say this times two plus y, um, you know, we're always adding three. And so we would want to have a default argument for that just to save us some time down the road. Um, so the way we can do that is inside this function part of the function, um, we can specify a default by saying, okay, x equals 10 by default, if I don't say, if I don't tell it what it is, and by default, y equals three, okay? And so when I do give it those defaults, I can actually run that function with no arguments because all of my arguments up here have defaults already. So let's say I'm running this. Okay, I can do times two plus y, no arguments. Okay, and remember that's 10 and three. But if I change my mind, you know, okay, um, I want x to be 100. I can do that. It's still taking that default of y equals three. But I can also be like, just kidding, I want to do 10 for y. And it can do that too. So it makes your function a little bit more flexible, um, you know, a little easier to use if you're like, okay, well, I'm always going to use these numbers. Um, you can just use it without argument. And um, that looks a little bit cleaner in your code. Okay, so let's do a little practice. So let's write a, another simple function. Let's write a function sqdiff that does a couple things. So um, I'm just gonna write it in my markdown up here, just you know, so we can kind of see it in totality. So I'm gonna make a function called sqdiff and I'm gonna assign that. It's gonna be the name of my function. I'm always gonna start with that function thing. And it's going to take two numbers, x and y, with default values of two and three. So I'm going to do x is equal to two by default. And y is equal to three by default. Okay. And, you know, I'm going to use the curly brackets just because that looks, uh, you know, good to me and I want to break line. So it's going to take these two numbers and take the difference. Okay, so let's do x minus y. And it's going to square the difference. So let's raise that to the two. And then it's going to return the final value. So let me assign this value that I'll get here. Let me give it the name out. And let me return out. Okay, so I'll save that. Um, and let's see if it works. Let's just give it um, a couple different arguments. Let's give it four and y is two. Great. Could do different arguments, etc. Okay. Um, so we could write this a couple different ways, right? So we could do it without the curly brackets. could give it those same default arguments. And then if we wanna just keep it simple, we could do x minus y or y minus x, I guess we'd wanna specify which one we want. And again, let's run that. And same thing. Okay. 
Um, so we got a question in the chat, um, what does return do? Um, and I think that's a great question because in this case, it's just a little like seems extra, right? It seems like it's not really needed. Um, but let's say um, we have a couple different items that we're interested in calculating. So let's do X plus Y is the first thing. And then this difference here is the second thing. I'll run that. And then if I do SQ diff like before, uh, let me give it a, a bigger number. Okay, um, so we're getting this um, last, um, basically last part of the function. We don't get any of this stuff up above it. Um, but let's say that this is really what we're interested in. Oops. Um, and we actually, okay, we decide, okay, we want to return um, out minus out two, or we want to just return out, then we have that flexibility to tell it exactly what we want. Okay, so then if I were to run that same thing again, it's actually giving me out and not out to. So hopefully that makes a little sense. It allows you to be a little bit more specific in what you want to give it instead of just like kind of printing the last thing. Um, so it will come in handy when you're doing a little bit more complicated functions. But yeah, for stuff like this, that's, um, you know, kind of just algebra, things like that, um, or very, very short function, uh, you don't need return. Again, best practice to do that. Okay, so let's prove to um, ourselves that we actually did that. So the SQ diff, uh, just like we coded over here, we're assigning it uh, x equals two, y equals three by default, and then we're giving it this uh, function here basically to find the difference and square it. And if we run this, do, 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 and test it out, we should get uh, 25 for this one. So it's five squared. Um, and this is a, I guess, something we haven't talked about too much in this class, but here what we've got are x and y, and r, if you don't give it the x argument here and the y equals argument, r can interpret those as positional arguments. So it says, okay, well, if you don't tell me x equals or y equals, I'm going to assume that the first one is x, and I'm going to assume that the second one is y. Um, it is a little nicer to write it out like this, just to remind yourself which things are which, um, but you can do it this way if you want. And you may have noticed in some of our functions that we're using, sometimes we specify um, x equals or y equals kind of thing, um, and sometimes we don't. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Okay, so functions don't have to just deal with numbers. They can use characters, they can use vectors, all kinds of things. Um, and so let's say we want to write a function that takes a character type word. Um, and what we want to do in the, in the meat of our function is we want to change that word to upper. And we want to repeat that word five times. Okay. And we're calling this function that does this, we're calling it loud. And so, you know, we save that function, we run it. And we should be able to just run the loud function with the argument word and just give it a character string and see, uh, see that output below. And again, so that's 
it's two upper and then it's been repeated just like the function asked for. Okay, so functions can work on tibbles as well. So that's you know where the really fun stuff begins. Um, so we can, uh, let's uh, create a function that is doing some thing with filter, um, but just as a reminder, um, something to be aware of is that you can filter for a specific row number. Um, so let's say we want to filter for row number is equal to, you know, the, the fifth row of the data. We can do that um, with this filter function and the row number um, function here. And so let's read in this uh, cars data. Okay, just a reminder, got all of these columns um, and it's, uh, we're interested in, you know, is it a bad buy or not? But let's say we want to create a function that takes a specific data set and pulls out the row that we specify. And so the function that would do that, we'd say, okay, well, I've got uh, the data here, and I'm going to pipe whatever that data happens to be. I'm going to pipe that into filter. I'm going to pull out the row number, and the row number is equal to whatever that row is that I specified inside function. Okay. And we're calling that function that we're creating, we're calling that get row. And so how does that look in practice? Um, so we'll just use the get row uh, function that we created. We'll specify, okay, well, what was that data frame we actually wanted to practice this on? So let's give it cars. And what was the row that we wanted to extract? And so, okay, let's, let's give it 10 for row. Um, and we see here that we get just one line. We get one line of the code um, in Tibble form, um, and this ref ID is actually, you know, corresponds to the row um, in that particular data set. You can kind of see that here. Um, but yeah, it's giving us that line. Okay, so we've got a question. Rather than row number, can you filter a specific row? Um, for a specific year or type of car. Yeah, sure, you can do that. You can say, okay, I'm gonna have tons of these car data sets. Um, they're all gonna have Mazdas in them. And I wanna, for each one of these data sets, I'm gonna want to filter out Mazdas, for example. Um, and you could, you could do that. Or you could say, um, instead of row, you know, I'm gonna provide it a string that says, okay, I'm gonna filter out whatever this car is at any given time. Yep, you can definitely do that. Okay, so kind of adding on to the function we just created. So, you know, here we got, we were able to get the row of our data set, but, you know, maybe we want to get the row and the column. Um, so we can use select and then the number of the column that we're interested in to choose the column n. Um, so let's say, okay, we're, we're getting some data set, we're filtering for some row that we specify, and we're also selecting only the column that we're interested in. And so that's our function that we've created, get index. And we've specified three different arguments. And so, yeah, okay, we're giving it this data set cars, we're giving it the row number 10, and we're giving it the column number eight. Um, and so that's a nice way if you're like, I need a specific cell of my data frame, you can make a function to extract that. Okay, and so um, once again, just like before, we can include default values for arguments. So let's say um, I want by default to get the uh, row one, column one of a specific data frame, um, I can kind of mix and match, you know, I can give it a default variable or default value for row and column, but 
basically this function won't work without a data frame. So if I, you know, I don't want to give it a default data frame, that doesn't make much sense. Um, I don't have to do that. And so in this case, um, I'll use uh, the function I created up here, get top and tell it, okay, um, I want that to equal cars, um, but by default row and column are equal to one and, and that's cool, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, so yeah, you can get that index uh, two. Okay, so now that we've made our own functions, um, we're going to talk about a couple ways you can apply them um, in, in an easy way, um, and you can apply other functions as well, you know, functions that you haven't made. But um, so we'll talk a little bit about S apply. Um, think of it as I'm applying things in a simple or straightforward way. Um, so S apply will take the form of a vector or list or um, it also can pull things out of a data frame. And you're gonna give it some function you want to happen on that vector or, or list, okay? So it's basically just applying the function. It's a little bit uh, different way of, of kind of using that um, function. Okay, and something just to be aware of, when you provide that function, you don't want parentheses on it, okay? So that will mess stuff up um, and you might get a warning message or error message that's like pretty confusing. Um, so just be aware that when you use S apply and across, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, just make sure you don't use parentheses on the function. And so what, what happens if we do S apply on cars, which, which is a tibble, um, it's, and we ask it, okay, well, what's class? We use this class function. S apply is gonna, by default, you know, say, okay, well, I, I don't really work on a tibble, but I'm gonna pull out the uh, column names. And so instead of having to run class on every single column name, I can apply the class function to all of those columns. And so you can see it's given me every single column here, told me what type it is, there are probably easier ways to do this, but uh, just kind of showing how that works here. And so the really cool and powerful uh, thing that you can do with S apply is actually use functions on the fly. So let's say we wanted to, you know, we wanted to pull out this odometer um, data from this data frame. So I'm just pulling it here to make it a vector. And you're thinking, okay, well, I want to, you know, use that downstream somewhere. Um, but as I'm uh, kind of pulling it out of my data set, I want to apply really quickly. Um, just if I just want to divide it by a thousand, you know, maybe it's like, uh, you know, you, you want to make it a little bit cleaner to look at or something like that. Um, but you can apply transformations um, pretty quickly uh, using this form. So S apply, you know, provide it whatever you're interested in. And then the function, you can create it right there. Um, all you have to do is just the same kind of format we just talked about. You use function, you give it your arguments, and then you give it the, the meat of the function right there. Okay, so places where this can be handy. Um, so let's actually subset our data a little bit um, to move forward. So here I'm creating this data set cars double, which I'm just selecting a, a subset of columns just to make life easier here. Um, so I'm selecting make model and then all of the columns that are a double type. And let's say I want to update the odometer value. So I'll do S apply. I'll pull that column that I'm interested in. And I'll apply that times two plus Y function that we made before. And uh, so remember, uh, this had default arguments. I think it was like 10 and three or something like that. Something to be aware of. 
Um, but I'm going to apply that to the um, vehicle odometer uh, data. And so I'll save that as a vector. Save that as odometer updated. And so, you know, maybe you'd want to replace or make a new column with that information. So we can use mutate to accomplish that. So here I've got just, you know, taking my data and piping that into mutate. And I'm saying, okay, I want to create a new column, odometer, you know, times two plus y. And that's going to be, uh, have the values of odometer updated that I created up here. Okay. This select is just to kind of narrow down the data frame to make it easier to look at. Um, but so I've got vehicle odometer right here. And if you look all the way over here, this new column that we made, um, it did our times two plus y function. So um, I'm not sure exactly the math here, but it looks to be roughly two times uh, the vehicle odometer right here. Okay, so that's um, kind of a lot of steps, right? So like there's this S apply, um, and then I'm applying it here. Like, I feel like there's must, must be a faster way to do this. Um, and surprise, there is. Um, so dplyr has this awesome function called across, which makes it easy to apply the same transformations to multiple columns. So you can kind of almost iterate and do the same thing uh, multiple times. And it allows you to use um, basically uh, the tidy select things that we were learning about. It allows you to use those inside, summarize, and, and mutate, which is really handy. Um, so when we use across, all we have to do is specify which columns we want to go across. So which columns we want to use for this you know, iterative behavior and what function we want to apply across those columns. So the um, basically the format of it is, is kind of similar to apply, um, but we'll give it um, a couple arguments. So across takes this dot calls argument and it takes the dot FNS, so the, the function that you want to apply. And then um, you'll recall that we don't add any parentheses on the end of the function, but you know, what if you want to remove NAs? What if you want to do like important stuff with that function um, and provide it arguments? Um, you can actually do that after uh, the dot FNS argument. So I'll, I'll show you kind of how that works in a second. Okay, so let's see how across actually works in practice. So let's say I take this uh, uh, narrowed down cars data set that I created and I'm grouping that by make. So that's like, you know, uh, Mazda, Ford, GMC, all that stuff. Um, and I wanna summarize across every single column. I wanna summarize and get the mean um, so I can do that. Um, so all I have to tell it is inside summarize, tell it, well, I want to go across multiple columns. So I want to go across everything. And I want to apply the mean function. Okay. And so it's done this group by, so it's got our different makes here. Um, model, uh, it can't really take the mean of a character type. So it's given me NA uh, here, but it's given me the mean of everything else. And I only had to uh, use the across function to do all of that. Okay, so let's say, uh, you know, we want to supply an additional argument to that function that we're using. They just come at the end. And so let's say I'm doing the same thing. Um, I'm grouping by make, but I want to summarize across columns. I want to summarize across columns where the column is a uh, double precision numeric type. I don't want to do anything across a character column. Um, and I'm saying, okay, well, I want to use this quantile function, but um, I want to take the 95 uh, percent um, quantile. 
And so what, you know, what's that 95% uh, value um, that I can get that? So um, all I have to do is provide the argument as I would inside the quantile function. So remember, uh, you know, if I'm doing uh, quantile, I would give it this probs argument inside, right? And let's write that out in a better way. So like, let's say I have my numbers here. So whatever you're doing the quantile on um, and then your arguments. But yeah, on this, in this case, those arguments go on the outside. And if you have multiple, they just kind of chain onto each other um, with kind of separated by commas. Okay, and so um, I'm just going to get rid of that here. Um, so we can again use different tidy select options. So um, again, grouping by, and let's say I want to select only columns that start with this BEH string, and I want to apply mean um, that I can do that. And I'm in this case, because I'm selecting fewer columns, I'm getting uh, basically a smaller tibble out of that. Okay, and so we, we looked at just, at just now at summarize, but let's say we want to combine across with mutate, you know, we want to mutate several um, columns. And so let's say, okay, well, there's all of these columns that start with VEH, I, I want to round those and I want to round to the nearest thousand. I don't, I don't want it to be precise at all. Um, so all we have to do is do mutate and we're mutating across multiple columns. The columns that we're using are any that start with VEH. We're giving it the round function and round takes this argument digits, which allows you to choose, you know, how you're rounding it. And if you give it the argument negative three, it kind of moves the uh, precision to the left. And so negative three would be the nearest 1000. Um, and you can see that all of these columns that start with BEH, okay, you know, I've rounded to the year 2000. I've rounded to the nearest thousand odometer reading. But then these other columns, um, B, B, Y, R, N, O, um, that didn't get rounded because it doesn't start with V, E, H. So you're preserving all of the data. You're just doing stuff to a subset of those columns that you've selected. Okay, just another example of uh, mutate here. So let's say we want to take every single one of our columns and we want to replace a specific string, we want to use the pattern capital A and we want to replace it with any uh, with with these lowercase a's. And so um, you can see in both of these columns, I've got lowercase a's where I formerly had uppercase a's. I'm not sure, uh, you know, why you would want to do this, but, you know, you can kind of see the idea, you know, maybe you have a string um, uh, like SARS-CoV-2 and it's capitalized in a weird way, you could do that. Um, and, and of course, other tons of other things you could do. Okay, and so again, just another example. So let's actually use the uh, child mortality data because there's like lots of NAs in this data set. So let's say, um, okay, I'm taking this data set and I'm selecting only the, uh, the columns that start with basically like in the 1940s. So that's our subset of data that we're working with. But then let's only mutate across and we're going to change something. We're only uh, actually updating something across um, a few of those columns. So let's select 
columns 19, 43, 44, and 45. And for those, let's use replace NA to change those NAs to zero. So I'm providing this replace equals zero argument. Um, and if I look at the data here, these columns, um, instead of having the NAs, I've replaced those with zeros. But because I've used this across function, um, I'm able to really like have more control over which columns I pick. I could pick everything. I could pick just one. I could pick uh, some that meet some criteria. Um, in this case, I just gave it a vector of the columns that I wanted to, to use this function on. But yeah, you get the idea. You can really have a lot of flexibility for what you choose um, going into across.